Um, so today, Emily and I are going to talk about how to navigate the nanny family dynamic. So this is um, something that is a big topic for a lot of people, often for a family who are engaging a nanny for the first time, um, have a lot of questions about how to go about it and how to best approach the situation in working together and engaging a nanny coming into their family home, but also for a nanny, um, whether it's your first first time as a nanny or you're a seasoned nanny, I feel like there's it's still a dynamic that ha there's a lot to it, and um, there are things that can pop up. And so we're actually going to talk about a lot of uh, some of those things today, just to get a bit of a get a bit clearer mm -hmm. on how that can be a smoother experience and process for everyone involved. Because at the yep. end of the day, it's about the children, so the smoother mm -hmm. it is and the more open the communication between the family and the nanny, yep. um, the better it is for the children who are part of that experience. Yeah. Yeah, and we were saying before, I mean, you brought up the point that inviting a nanny into your home is, you know, being opening up and being vulnerable to your daily life and your routines and um, allowing yourself, I guess, to be seen in that way. Um and it can also be tricky from the nanny's perspective of trying to work out, you know, your boundaries and your place and where you fit in within that environment and the family mm -hmm. um, and, like, what your role is, um, especially, like, working with a new family or, you know, if you're a new nanny. Mm -hmm. um, and... Yeah, it's a li I think it's a little bit sensitive because... Our home is our sacred space and our safe space and the place where we are, like you said, we're exposed, mm. where the way we do life is exposed, you know, our mess, our routines, our mm. what we're good at, what we're not good at, all of that is exposed. So having someone come and yeah. fully see, it's different to having a friend over where you might tidy up before they come. A nanny is literally in the thick of yeah. Their family life. Every day. <laughs> You don't want to be spending half an hour cleaning every morning Before just because the, the nanny is coming. Yeah, that's right. So, um, yeah, it is. It's vulnerable, and um, so part of the role of the nanny, I think, is having that compassion, and which, if you're in this work, mm. is kind of a natural trait. I feel. Yeah, and being respectful of you know boundaries and knowing. Yeah, I guess just knowing that you know you're not there to. I guess criticize yeah, <laughs> as that's well. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so making sure that it, that the home is still that safe space. So, yeah, I guess from like from your perspective of a nanny, what kind of you know kind of boundaries in general do you feel need to be made? Um, for me, or for. Just, I guess, in the whole relationship. Yeah. Um, I suppose when, when I'm stepping into a new role, I do really appreciate when a family is able to say, "These are this is how we do things, these are our routines. Yeah. And then at, at the same time, I just recently began a new role a couple of days a week where she said, so this is how we do it, this is how we do eating time. You know, she ran me through everything. It's amazing. She's yep. highly organised. Yep. But then she also said, but we also want it, you to do it your way because we mm. want, she, I won't say her name, we want our ch girl, our child, our baby to be exposed to different ways. Yeah. Uh, so within the realms of respecting how, you know, they like things to kind of be neat and tidy and clean. So within the mm. realms of that, yep. respecting... um their space and their home and how they like things to be mm -hmm. but still being able to you know like I'll take her outside and we'll sit on the rug and have the afternoon snack in the sun sometimes mm -hmm. because she loves being outside rather than you know in the high chair yep in the kitchen so I still yep. kind of add my own little flavor because I've she's given me permission to yeah so, so it sounds like it's really important and really helpful to have that conversation <coughs> with the family beforehand yeah so you know like what their routine is, what they're comfortable with. 
and how you can sort of find your own place within that. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Which is also reading the child or the children involved. So that's where it's awesome to have a bit of, um, I suppose it's creative freedom or um, flexibility because to be able to respond to the children in the moment, you need flexibility. Mm. Um, so, yeah, there is a bit of a balance between respecting the boundary of how the family does it and responding yeah. to the children in the moment as well. Yeah. So yeah. It's an art. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, do you also have a conversation about the family's values? Uh, yes. And your your values, I guess, as well. Yeah, definitely. So, um, and it also just comes through. It's just, it's not always necessarily consciously directly highlighted because mm-hmm. it comes through in the, conversa- in the conversation around how they raise their child and yeah, sure. um, what's important to them. And Yeah, so like if they say our routine is to lie down with the child for the nap, then you know that like co-sleeping yes is a yeah they value value. connection and touch and all that sort of thing yeah yeah Mm -hmm. cool definitely um and because this is something that came up in our um like a a discussion on the facebook group was about risk taking so like at what to what extent do you allow the child to take risks Mm mm-hmm you know, in order to just learn from the natural consequences. Mm-hmm. So something as simple as like jumping off a couch onto a floor or something more extreme, like, I don't know, climbing up. I don't know, I can't a think tree of anything. A tree, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a fence that I was like, not so extreme. <laughs> yeah, which is different for every person as well, what they consider to be extreme. That's true. Because, I mean, I, I mainly just look after my daughter and I'm really like I'm fine with her taking risks as long as I sometimes I'll say to her are you aware that you know your foot is here or Mm. are you aware that you're this high up the off the ground or whatever Mm -hmm. which I think bringing that awareness is helpful and sometimes I'll watch when other people especially people close to me you know like family and friends are around when she's you know doing risk taking things they watch her and like oh no come down from there or be careful and um so yeah it's it's interesting to observe the difference between people's comfort level Mm. with that yeah yeah Mm -hmm. i'm not sure if i'm more comfortable because i'm her parent yeah yeah because it can go the other way as well where mum can be the one that's more protective yeah or almost Mm. the mother's love can be a little bit inhibiting yeah in a sense which is kind because that's part of the natural role i guess Mm. is to protect a a child but you have the awareness i feel because you have the awareness of how important risk taking is for Mm. her development and her learning and her growth Mm. you're able maybe to that's true i mean it it does back from that a bit differ Mm -hmm. but mainly like the points where i'd be more protective is where my past experiences with her, for example, having anaphylactic reaction, you know, mm. kick in. So if I feel like there's risks around that could potentially end in her having a reaction, yeah. I would be a lot more protective and take her out of that situation or, yeah. you know, watch her a lot more closely. But, yeah, I mean, I, I'm assuming that would be a very rare <laughs> yeah. experience for, you know, mothers to have to watch out for. Yeah, that's a unique circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Actually, something that's come up, I think – Going into sort of mother-father dynamic, more traditionally and even sort of um, the energetic role of the ma- mother or masculine and, mm. and um, masculine and feminine, it does seem to be, um, and I see it because I've spent time in so many families, it does seem to be a common dynamic that mother's mm. role is to comfort yep. and f- and it's it's with dad where they do the fun stuff, yep. you know, jump off the couch and take the risks. Yep. So I wonder if because you've had that time being that it's just you, mm-hmm. it has been for some for some time in That's there. That's true. Maybe I've taken That you've taken both. on both. Because I feel yep. I do that as well as the nanny because yep. it's just me. I feel like I switch between both mm. because that other – other that other part's not present at that yeah. time it's just me yeah that's true so we kind that's of almost step into both of them yeah um 
in terms of talking about the risk taking with as the nanny stepping into the family maybe it is important to have that discussion around mm. yeah have that as part of the initial discussion yeah what they're comfortable with so I mean with one of my families it's pretty obvious what's okay because when the mum comes home from work um you know she also does play and um allows the risk yep. taking and stuff because she gets home and they all get excited and they jump off the couch and she's like totally okay with it so yep. I know yep you can also just intuitively read yeah. and pick up on things like that but in some some instances it's there are things maybe that need to be talked about like mm. um such and such really wanted to climb the tree today when we went to the park you know are you okay with that yep. I wanted to let him yeah so even like that like this is my feeling on mm his level of capability mm. you know, how do you feel how would you feel if i let him climb the tree yeah <laughs> next time yeah that's cool <laughs> um yeah so it's sometimes it's important as well so yeah. having that initial discussion but also bringing it up as it go as yeah go as well because it changes and shifts as they become more able yeah that's and true. need to step it up yeah yeah mm. um so do you have a particular way, like, you know, I guess it's different for every family, like mm-hmm. you say, um, but in general, like, how do you find is the best way to communicate between, do you, like, maybe at the, at the end of the day, do you sit down with the parents and have a conversation or do you do it maybe once a week or do you email each other? I'm not really sure um, what's the, to make sure that you're communicating about these things. Keeping it open. Yeah. Um, a couple of ways so with a couple of my families there's actually a book that's out for the day where they've written notes of things that are going on like oh yeah you know at the that's moment we're idea. toilet training in the last few days have been like this or that yeah there's been some accidents or there's been, there's not been just yep. so like and this is what we've been doing mm. you know to encourage that's a good idea if the parents don't have time to sit down with you before they yep. go to work as well yeah definitely and then it's a bit of an anchor into what's important at the moment as well for them of what's going on in their life. Yeah. And it's there for me to reread if I need to through the yep. day. And then I'll add to it. So really key, this is with two families that I do this. It's not, I doesn't necessarily have to be an extensive mm. like daycare. Just like a dot point. What or... time, every, what times they yep. went to the toilet and all that sort of thing. But I'll, I'll mention what time their sleeps were and how long, whether they had a bowel movement. Yeah. Um, whether it was an eating day or uh, they weren't very hungry that day mm-hmm. like so that's one way we sort of can communicate but also we just chat I think it's just it's just natural mm. for me I think to just say this is how our day was and yeah um, if anything's important it allows that opportunity for something to come up either way mm-hmm. Um. But it is, it is easier if when you arrive, when the nanny arrives in the morning, that there's space. So what I mean is, it's not like, it's hard. I've had jobs where I arrive at eight o'clock and they've got to leave at eight o'clock. Where if, it's a bit more rushed. Yeah. yeah. If, if the nanny arrives, at, say you have to be out the door at eight and the nanny arrives at 7.30 yeah. or 7.45. Yeah. It allows time, even if they're still getting doing their makeup or something. They can you can still, yeah, chat if you need to. Yeah, and it's nice to have that co- you've connected before the parents go out the door. You you're continuing that connection. Yeah, between you as well as between the ch- you and the children, which mm. is important as well. Mm. And you feel more part of the family. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um. Which I think is important because that extends to the children as well. That they're part of a tribe, mm. you know. It has a, it's a bit more of a belonging feeling for them. Yep. If there's that connection between the nanny and the parent. Yep. Mm. Cool. <laughs> um, and there's something we were talking about before briefly was that. The, dyna- the dynamics change slightly if the parents, you know, work from home. Yes. Or around the home mm-hmm. while the nanny's there. Yeah. Um, because f- 
few reasons. There's a few things going on. So when you're all home together, it's obviously a different dynamic to when the child it's just you guys or just the children with the nanny because there's now two different ways of being and doing in the house together with the children and they yep. can they feel the they T- feel tension it. or not necessarily tension but just different disharmony yeah different ways of of being in the world yep so and mum they're like parents are their number one go to for everything yep so um a nanny being in the house they're not necessarily going to go to the nanny first because you're still there. Yep. So it can be difficult to have that separate if you're needing to go into the office and work, especially mm. if they're under sort of the age of four, mm. where they still need to have access to you. Yep. They're not mentally able and emotionally able to understand that you're there but not there. Mm. Um, so that can be tricky to navigate. Yeah. Um, and it can be it can be uncomfortable actually if I can be completely open and honest. It can be uncomfortable as the nanny to be keeping them away from their yeah. mum or yeah, their parents. Sure. It actually feels... Mm. I've had that experience <laughs> observing because I, I sometimes will bring my daughter to my parents' house so they can look after her while I work. Mm-hmm. And she was good with it for the first few weeks, first few months. She would go for a walk with them and stay kind of like downstairs with them. Um, but recently she's been wanting to be with me more and she's three. So she's probably, you know, not at that, I guess, age yet where she can understand that. So, um, Mm. so I, I observed that my, yeah, my parents were pretty uncomfortable with, I guess, forcing her away from me. Mm -hmm. Cause then you're the bad guy. I guess so. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, and like I was, I was at first, I was kind of like, just do it, just like, just take her so I can concentrate. Mm-hmm. And I, I was, I was also open to her, you know, being able to come into the room, like come and say hi, or bringing her toys in and playing on the floor. And I told her, um, like you can play here, and I'll be here, but I can't really have a conversation with you and if there's anything you need you have to go and ask um, mama or papa because I I'm working and I can't get up and Mm -hmm. you know help you Mm -hmm. go to the toilet or get food or whatever it is that you need um and she sort of didn't really understand (laughs) that Mm. I mean she said okay (laughs) mum but (laughs) when it came to it when she went to the toilet she's like I want you come here right now (laughs) yeah so but yeah anyway Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I did observe that with my parents. They didn't really want to take her away from me, especially when she was like, crying and kicking. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because um, I suppose it's this is another thing, though. I suppose every day and every moment is also different. Like some days you can redirect and they're happy to. Yeah, let, yeah, that's a good. Let's go and do that. You know, like let's go outside and have a picnic. You know, yep. take a snack outside and have a picnic. Yeah. And sometimes they're happy to do that. I suppose it depends on the level of need for their the parent in that moment. Yeah, that's true. So it's being able to, yes, creatively come up with ways in the moment, but allowing for when it really is a, a mm. genuine like they need to go in and. Yeah, and I think because children, like, the develop isn't linear, so they'll kind of cycle through, mm. like, going through more need for connection and then, like, feeling more confident and more comfortable or whatever that is. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, like, at the start, she was sort of comfortable with being with my parents and letting me work, and then she kind of went up to a different stage and... Maybe she'll go back down soon. I don't know. Yeah, because everything can be cruising until they have a developmental leap, and then yeah, every, it all changes for that period. Yeah, exactly. That storm, stormy time. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's also allowing for that, I guess, in that dynamic. If parents are working from home, mm. allowing for yeah, the flexibility mm. of the option. 
and it's probably that's probably actually something that's a conversation that is really important to have of um what is the boundary like if you're if you're working from home and you as the nanny are there with the children having that discussion around if they want to come in you know are are they allowed to come in what's the boundary around that Mm. um can they come in and say hi and then come back out mm, yeah and at what point do i need to come in and start encouraging them to come (laughs) come out (laughs) yeah and are there some are there days sometimes when they might just need to take calls outside, go elsewhere for meetings yep. and calls that are important, particularly important yep. to minimise the um, potential for interruption. Yeah. Um, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> um, is there anything else that we've missed we want to cover? Because <coughs> I've gone through my list. Okay. Um, you may Actually, sleeping arrangements and eating habits I think maybe they'd mm-hmm. be good to talk about so yep. um, yeah like how it, de- it would depend on how the family so how, if, if they're at an age where they still have naps in the daytime um, yeah what what's the routine around that whether you co-sleep or not would the nanny co-sleep to get them to, mm. um, into that space of being able to drop in and have a good um, nap yeah um, Obviously, maybe it's something to just talk about. Mm. And something else just came up for me now, which I'm not sure if as a nanny you would come across <coughs> this often or not. But because I've noticed, for example, like if the child falls asleep dr- like during a car trip mm-hmm. and you need to get stop to get petrol... Like, are the parents comfortable with you leaving the child in the car asleep? Mm-hmm. Obviously, depending a, on a minute while you go what and season pay. It is and that's true. If it's that too sort of hot, <laughs> yeah. Whether it's summertime, all having that sort to of thing. judge those things yeah. as well. But I was in that situation, and I just asked the family. Yeah. Um, it's like actually, I need to get petrol today. Are you okay with me if I park close to the door? And they said, yeah, that's fine. We do that too. Yeah. So obviously not Keeping on Keeping an eye on the car. Yeah, yeah. And locking it and not if it's a hot day. Yeah. If it's a hot day, we would have just not gone to sport probably. Yeah. Um, but generally I try and make sure I'm, I'm not in that situation. Mm. But yeah, let's yeah. be honest, it can happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think as a parent it's unavoidable. Yeah. But as a nanny, you could potentially time getting petrol before work or that's after right. work. Yeah. Yeah, and also, like, if the child falls asleep during the car, like, do you transfer him or her inside? Do you sit in the car mm-hmm. while they sleep? Yeah. Things like that. And also, um, it's important to have a discussion around, because some people's approach to sleep sleeping nap time is it's at a certain time of day and it's in bed. Yep. And... um you know, keep them awake in the car. Like some mm. people do have that approach. Yep. Um, and I, cause I had a temp job where I took the two year old out on a walk through the bush and everything. And he fell asleep on the pram in the pram on the way home. When we got home, she went, <gasps> no, she, you know, we don't let him sleep in the pram. Oh, okay. And, um, I, I didn't realize cause I'm so used to, I am used to being in situations where it's a bit more fluid. That the body sleeps when yep. it needs to sleep. Yep. I hadn't it hadn't occurred to me to even have that conversation mm. until but you know we learn as we go along this is this is how it is. Yep. It's life. Yep. <laughs> um now I realize it's important to have that conversation. Yeah. Is it okay if the child falls asleep in the pram or in the car? So you do have like a checklist? <laughs> <laughs> I do that I that we send out to people. Yeah. But we can probably add things to it now. Okay, after cool. This I was just thinking for you, like you personally, like things oh. you've learnt along the way to talk about. Yeah, and sometimes it's covered in that initial time that you spend with the family when they say this is how we do things yeah. and these are our routines. Yeah. Sometimes a lot of it's covered. Yeah. And then if it's not, you just ask. Yeah. Bring it up. Yeah, sure. Um, and eating habits. Yes, so that's important as well because it's another one. Like what's okay to eat mm. as well as, you know, whether there's any allergies that kind of goes without saying. Yeah. Um, because it's, you know, it's if, if someone's child has an allergy, they're probably going to mention it. Yeah, they would mention <laughs> it. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, I guess any other 
beliefs around, you know, like if someone's vegan by choice, mm. and things like that, they'll probably bring up. Yeah. Or like I try to limit their sugar intake or something. Mm-hmm. And that is important to have the conversation around because it is something can, that can be assumed that if you're a person that's cut out, that doesn't really consume consume <laughs> um, processed foods mm-hmm. and refined sugars mm-hmm. that someone else doesn't. Yeah. So as a, as a family, if you're making that decision, it's probably really is important to have that conversation with the nanny that, yeah. you know, if you go down the street and happen to go to the milk bar, you, you, lollies, chocolate's not okay. Yeah. You know, um, just to be clear on that. Yeah. Um, which I suppose if you're making that choice decision, you probably are going to be. So a lot of it just happens naturally. Yeah. These, these conversations. But yeah, yeah, also habits around eating, again, like the sleeping. Mm. Some people prefer, um, you know, eating is at a certain time, at a certain place, sitting at the table, where other people are a bit more fluid with, um, you know, especially toddlers that are active and on the go, yeah. having food available, which is kind of what I do. I put a platter of food out and they can yeah. pick as they need to. Mm. And I guess it depends on how people are comfortable with, with having mess. the mess <laughs> and like hygiene and stuff because I know yeah. some people – don't want like the idea of having sticky fingers around and things like that yeah and that's why they weren't separate mm-hmm. yeah or like you know just eat outside and play outside mm. could be another option mm-hmm. you don't have to clean up so much <laughs> yeah 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 it's definitely important to yeah find out what people's boundaries are in terms of what they're comfortable with mm. which might not always match up so like you said there's always ways to come to a compromise yeah because yeah you could do you could have a, a platter set up outside and mm. have it outside instead yeah if they don't want mess inside and i'm assuming from a nanny's perspective you're expected to clean up the mess that's made during mm-hmm. the day yeah so because i know i have a a friend who was a nanny for a little bit and she found that she was expected to do cleaning on top of that because the house was often messy when she came in uh-huh. and she found that really exhausting and trying to find that boundary of that as well because I think she also felt like she had to help the family uh-huh. out by doing more um, but yeah like I guess what what's the standard for that is there a, a basic do you just mm-hmm. I always up? say the number one role of the nanny is to keep the children happy safe and stimulated yeah so um their needs are met in terms of you know they're they're safe they're happy which you know they're always happy Mm. be able to hold space for them in a way where they come back to being yeah sure happy um and stimulate like they're getting what they need in terms of being stimulated and being able to take risks and all that sort of thing yeah and then beyond that um, generally my approach is you leave the house how you how you found it yeah and like I'll make sure all the dishes that we've used in our time are washed yeah or I might put on a I'll kind of keep things ticking over if time allows for it because every day is different with children if it's a day where they need you more you know they need there are a bit more emotional storms than usual they're at their sick so they mm. they need more um, time you know here more yeah touch and more time what um being close mm. you're obviously not going to go and just leave them and yeah. fold a load of washing yeah 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 <laughs> so given the depending on the day but most days allow for just keep things ticking over so which might mean you know putting on a load of washing emptying the dishwasher little things like that anything beyond that i feel like is a cleaner's role yeah sure and um, you're potentially being asked too much yeah um yeah, to be able to do that and hold space for the children. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. Yeah. You can't be present with the children if you have to be running around doing all the housework. That's right. Which is something you struggle with as a parent, but you would hope that if you're paying for someone, they'll be there for the child or the yeah. children. And a house cleaning rate is very different hourly rate as well to a nanny. So mm. it's important to be aware of. Yeah, sure. As the nanny, what you're being asked to do and as the family... What do you what do you really want from your nanny? You know, what's important comes back to values. Yep. What are your values? Yeah. Um, and because there are days where they're quite they're happy and content, 
and they want they actually want a bit of independence from you yeah so you like oh cool sweet i'll go and fold a load of washing because they're happy right now yeah so there is that opportunity as well yeah to do little things to help everything keep running smoothly mm. so you just take the opportunity when it arises yeah sure yeah cool does that answer the question it does thanks <laughs> Are you happy with that? Okay. Yeah, I think that covers cool. covers a lot of things of the uh, navigating the nanny family dynamic. But if we mm-hmm. haven't, yeah, just bring it up in the comments section <laughs> of the <laughs> post, and we can the discuss Facebook it group. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Okay, awesome. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. <laughs>